And you are inside the spotlight with Tracy Davids and Celeste. And it's just about 22 minutes after the hour of a six o'clock. It's an all morning show. And I am Natalie Lagore. No, the last time the country was chit chatting, the opposition, the government about what happened in the parliament, we kind of passed that a little bit. I know some people still thought in some serious feelings, probably some Tobagonians as well, and rightfully so. But we're going to be speaking with Mrs. Tracy Davis Celestin, who is political leader of the Tobago Council, to just find out what is in the bill, but most importantly, what is not in the bill, why it was rejected in some instances by some Tobagonians. Good morning to you, Mrs. Davis Celestin. Good morning to you, Natalie. Good morning to all of the staff at TTT, and good morning to all of Trinidad and Tobago. How are you? Especially Tobagonians. Big up on our whole self this morning. Yes, yes, indeed, indeed. <laughs> so, Mrs. Celestin, let us talk about, I know that the last time we spoke to Mr. Ansel Dennis, he said that there were six things that were signed off by everybody, about six things that were not in the bill that they signed off on. What were those six things that were not in the bill that were so crucial that I mean, some people still rejected the bill. Well, I don't know that they're not in the bill. I think um, the bill represents most of the thoughts of Tobago, Tobagonians um, at this time. Of course, the majority of the things on the bill um, have received the blessings of the people of Tobago. And for me, there are some fundamental uh, uh, um, areas that we all have agreed on. And those largely have to do with things of financial independence for uh, the people of Tobago, having to do with equality of status, having to do with the power to borrow and, of course, to make independence, having to do with a uh, sort of reconfiguration of the Tobago right. uh, legislature. What I want us to do, Tracy Davis and Celestin, is to break it down so that the average person out there who is listening can understand because Rock has played an interview, two interviews the other day on his radio program, which were two interviews that he did with Farley Augustine and with, Ms. with Dr. Winford, with Winford James, talking about the bill, talking about what happened in the parliament. And his feedback from the listeners is that most of them did not understand what was in the bill. So I don't want the, the big talk. I just wanted if we can list the important things that were in the bill. So we talk about equality, but what does that look like? All right. Well, I guess um, we will come to that point because of course, you know, we have to put the discussions into context in the context of those things that Tobagonians have agreed on. And then we would go uh, into the specifics to spell out what exactly they mean. And so, right. so what have they case? agreed on? What, yes. what have Tobagonians agreed on? Let's list them. Right. So the point is, um, the point is that, you know, when you're looking at the what is happening now in the parliament, of course, you have to start by first making a comparison between the Tobago House of Assembly Act 40 of 1996. And of course, the bills as they are have been laid in the parliament. And that is where the first Correct. comparison starts. And so we have been encouraging persons to read, read the two documents and you will see the differences and they are very, very stark. Of course, if you- I agree with you. I yes. agree with you because if you even just look at what the budgetary allocation, when you go from four to 6.8%, that is huge. You know, when you look at the ability to make laws, that is huge. When you look at the ability to go out there and borrow without the consent of cabinet, that is huge. But there are things that the cabinet have to have oversight of, which I know that a lot of Tobagonians aren't pleased with. I also know that there are legislation that needs the oversight of parliament that Tobagonians aren't pleased with. I also know that there is this discussion about this definition of what Tobago really means. And then we come down to the 11 administrative nautical miles and what those that means as well yes and so and so yes um in in terms of making the comparison as i indicated there are some fundamental areas that we can work with because of course we're looking at getting to a place that eventually we will all be comfortable with and so you're right in talking about some of those things that 
people have issues with. But at the end of the day, the question is whether the majority agrees with what is in the current bill. And I would say, yes, in that context, you may have one or two persons who may have their own um, personal agendas, who may have their own desires, political and otherwise, who might be very vocal and who would indicate that they are not in agreement. But in large part, what was submitted to the cabinet, what is now being discussed at the Joint Select Committee and in the Parliament at committee stages in large part represents the consensus and the will of the people. Let us look, for instance, at the whole issue of the definition of Tobago. One of the things that people in Tobago have said is that they want a greater share of the marine resources. Of course, if you were to make the comparison, we have moved from six um, nautical miles to 11 nautical miles. And based on what I'm hearing from the voices of the people, they are comfortable that in that arrangement, it accounts for a greater share of the marine resources. But, but I don't know that it gives them that, that security that it's marine resources when in the bill it talks about administrative nautical miles. Why was the word administrative included? Because that man, I watched the Joint Select Committee and I saw that it was a bone of contention for Ho Choi Charles when he was there. And I'm saying, what is this administrative nautical mass? What does it mean when it says administrative? Will they be able to go below the sea? Well, it speaks to an exclusive um, lawmaking authority for Tobago, which gives Tobago the fundamental authority and the power to make laws over that particular uh, territorial space, which would be, of course, land and, 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 and the marine life um, for the people of Tobago. So because one of the things is that the Tobago House of Assembly has moved from a body corporate to a legislative um, body, which of course gives you the power to make laws. But if it is that you are to make laws, then you must know which area um, you have the power or the authority to make laws over. And that is why it is important in this particular arrangement to define what exactly do we have control over in terms of making these laws that have been included in the Tobago Island Bill. So we are And you know what, you know what, Mr. Celestin, I, I agree with you because I have to tell you that I did check in with the Attorney General sometime on my own time just to find out about that. And what he explained to me is that, you know, because I was saying to him that maybe Tobagonians are, are upset over the fact that they can't make certain laws. And he says, no, it's not that is that you can't make laws that are going to be infringing on the laws of Trinidad and Tobago. Right. And those are the limitations. Yes. But in terms of laws for Tobago, they can, can do that. There is the authority, there is the power to make laws, except that, Natalie, and this is a fundamental point, in the consensus, Tobago did not ask for federalism. Tobago did not ask for cessation or independence. In large part, we still want to be a part of the country called Trinidad and Tobago. And, and so that was the view of the Tobago, the, the, the Tobago PNM Council. When we spoke with Farley Augustine, and I heard him on another program talking about wanting a quasi-federal system and comparing it to somewhere like Scotland and how that fits into the United Kingdom. And of course, we'd have heard Watson Duke talking about secession. And even one of his, um, as one of the people who voted for the PDP, who represents the PDP, talking about secession as well. And I think this is where we have the discrepancy that you may come and say you're speaking for all of Tobago, just as Ansel Dennis did, but you have a six a six a situation in Tobago, and we cannot ignore that. And therefore, we cannot ignore the views of the political leaders or political leader of the People's Democratic Party. Patriotic Democratic, People's Natalie, Democratic Patriot. I, 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 get this I, I, I need to make the point that the process that has led us up to this point started about 2009. Some would even argue that it started before. And it was a very rigorous process that included over 250 uh, meetings and consultations and different views. And so what is before us now is largely the views of 
to begonians. This is what they would have asked for. So it is unfair to bring into the discussions at this point ideas from different political parties that has not seen or have not seen the time of day from the people of Tobago. Thoughts which were not even articulated in any of those discussions. None of the discussions have said, or none of the, 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 the documentations have pointed to anything having to do with cessation or anything having to do with independence. And so when we speak from the PNM platform, we are not advancing our own PNM philosophical position here. We are advancing what the people of Tobago have said in large part. So is it that the PDP is now introducing something new into this, the discussion that have not been properly vetted by the people of Tobago? And the well, well, Mrs. Celestine, I'll say to you that what I wanted in 2009 is not necessarily what I want now in 2021. So while I hear your point, I think it's still important to understand that people go and their views may change because Tobago and the outlook of Tobago and even how Tobago have developed have changed over the years. The Tobago we saw physically, even up to 2013, is not the Tobago we're seeing now in 2021. Well, I tell I people that all the time, that it is amazing how different Tobago looks now because I came to Tobago, you know, the when I was on the afternoon drive, we were in Tobago every week for months. And then I came to Tobago 2018 and I was looking around, but Tobago now has a hip strip. So it, it also, it is that because when you all did those consultations, the People's National Movement controlled Tobago politically, so to speak, right? And then we saw that changed. And therefore it is, it, it is critical to think that the views of the people might have changed too. So while those consultations were critical and important, there may be people, the people who support the PDP, who are looking at things differently now. Well, Natalie, we don't have that information. And if there is that information, of course, there is up until July 15th for those recommendations to be advanced. And up to this point, we have not seen um, those recommendations being put forward um, to the parliament. But at the end of the day, there are some fundamental areas that the people of Tobago have decided on. And those would be things like financial independence in, in, in the yeah. sense of more resources for the people of Tobago, in the sense of being able to borrow, in the sense of being able to invest, in the sense of being able to raise and to collect their own taxes in Tobago. That is one of the fundamental areas. Mm -hmm. And then have to do with the whole issue of the definition of Tobago as well. And then there are some other areas that would have been highlighted in the um, bill that are fundamental to the people that are fundamental to the people of Tobago. So if, for instance, there are any other views that should take precedence, there is still an opportunity. But the point must not be lost that up until this time, there has been no such outcry from the people that we want to be separated from Trinidad, that we want cessation, that we want independence. What people are saying in large part is that we still want to be a part of this country called Trinidad and Tobago, except that we want to determine how we manage all affairs in this island space called Tobago. So, in Mrs. Canada. Celestine, let me ask you, are you suggesting then that what we got in the bill, Tobagonians wanted it and therefore it just failed what? Because the United National Congress walked out of the parliament, that's the only reason, and that Tobagonians didn't have a problem with the bill? Well, what I am advancing, <laughs> what I'm advancing, Natalie, is that in order for the bills to be passed, there has to be the majority vote in parliament. Majority meaning the support from the PNM representatives, members of parliament, as well as the support from the UNC. And so if this has gone through a very rigorous process, 250 meetings at the level of the Joint Select Committee, calling in political parties, opening up the process so that Tobagonians can put into, 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 into consideration their views. And after all of this, the UNC walks out from the process 
what am I to what am I to conclude, Natalie? What are the people of Tobago to conclude? And well, they, well, maybe they, the United National the, Congress, maybe the United National Congress walked out because something else happened in the Parliament, which was the move of the motion did not wrap up the motion, and therefore something new was introduced where the move of the motion wasn't the one wrapping up the motion. Well, um, I, I don't want to get into the parliamentary nuances, but what I know is that um, motions can be moved and agreed on to allow um, speakers and to allow members of, of parliament to treat with matters in a specific way. And I'm sure you would have heard that not only from the prime minister, but also the leader of government business. But more importantly, Natalie, this is a very important time for the people of Tobago. And I am certain that if all sides agree that Tobago should receive the kind of um, consideration in the parliament as we have been covering for for the longest while, I am thinking that regardless of those nuances, regardless of those trivialities, um, members on both sides of the table, uh, both sides of the divide should at least sit. And I right. know- Let me put it to allow us you. To Blame, do you blame the People's National Movement for making that move, fully understanding that because things were so critical and, you know, things were so, so at such a delicate stage that nothing should have been changed to even give an opportunity to the United National Congress to react? Natalie, I cannot blame um, the government of the day. The government of the day has said to the people of Tobago, um, I know that the prime minister, when he came to Tobago in January to meet with um, political parties, it would have been the PDP and the PNM at that time, um, we agreed that we will put aside our short-term interest for the longer-term goal, which is to ensure that we all lobby to have the bills brought to the parliament in the shortest possible time frame. And then, of course, that would be the trigger for the next election. So if I'm to look at it from that perspective, the leader of the government would have done his part, in, and that is to bring the bills to the House. Um, however it played out in the House, is, 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 I, I wouldn't be able to comment on. But at the end of the day, the point must not be lost that it is an important time for Tobago. And there are some times that we must put aside those trivialities and look at the bigger picture, which is to ensure that all sit and give Tobago the power, the autonomy uh, that it needs to determine self. All right. So, you know, there are things in the bill and there are things that are not in the bill. Can you say to us what are those things? that are not in the bill that Tobagonians are saying that they want. And, you know, we'll get back a little bit to this quasi-federal system that Farley Augustine, Farley Augustine is speaking about and whether or not the people of Tobago now, not the people of Tobago of 2009, but the people of Tobago now really want that kind of arrangement. But well, talk to us about what's not in the bill. What are the things that are not in the bill that Tobagonians want? Well, I don't know that it's to be that what Tobigonians want. I know that it's a few persons who would have articulated um, the areas of dissatisfaction. I think they might be six to 10 or so in number. Um, if we were to look at the submissions from Farley and also from Hotjoy Charles that were made to parliament, I think most of them have been taken into consideration in the deliberations. And you would have heard from the attorney general, you heard from the prime minister in terms of how those were included and even the leader of assembly's business. I think the point of departure is where um, the articulation is for Tobago having its own judiciary system. Uh, the point of departure has to do with Tobago having its own public service arrangement. But of course, you know, I sat in some of those joint select committee meetings. I mm -hmm. think I was even in Trinidad, that kind of, not joint select committee, but the consultation. And I've never really heard the people articulate in any significant way to have their own judiciary system, to have their own um, public service and to have their own public service arrangement and even to elect the chief secretary by all of the people of Tobago as opposed to the political parties. And so to bring those into the discussions now without even consultation from the people of Tobago, as far as I'm concerned, is disingenuous. So on one hand, you're criticizing the government 
for perhaps not consulting sufficiently with the people of Tobago in terms of the provisions of the bill at this point in time. But on the other hand, those points are coming forward now that has, have not seen the time of day of the people of Tobago. And that is the difficulty that I am having and we are having at this point. Where did those ideas come from? Are they yeah. post agendas at this time? And this is the fundamental challenge because the majority of people have said what is contained in this document is what we are prepared to work with. Of course, if we want to remain within the um, confines of Trinidad and Tobago as a twin island republic, there are certain laws that will be triggered if we, certain actions will be triggered if we go outside of certain international laws and arrangements. And so the thing was shaped in a way to give Tobago all that it can get at this particular point in time without affecting those international treaties and those international law arrangements. So most and you of, don't think they could have gone their own judiciary and their own public service without interfering with those international arrangements? Because the people of Tobago have not said that this is what they want in any of the discussions. And this is the point I'm making. And so to insert it now, but more than that, you may very well find that the excess that we receive over the 4.03% would be, would be spending large part on recurrent expenditure. In terms of having your own judiciary, you now have to have judges and magistrates and set up different types of court. I have, I, 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 have I mean, no come on, we've seen the attorney general do that. He's good. We've seen the attorney general. One of the talking points of this government is all of the things that they've done within the judiciary. Uh, so we know that they have the capacity to do it because we've seen, you know, the children's court, the night court, we've seen, you know, Tobago having its own arrangement instead of having to come Tobago to Trinidad. We've seen cameras, to see so much that, that they've done. So we know Tobago, that there are boss that are doing that at this yeah. point. And Tobago is benefiting from that. that Tobago and wants. it makes no sense for us to have an arrangement where we have to put the bill for all of that because we may find that we would utilize or excess allocation on recurrent expenditure as opposed to treating with development expenditure for the island and we have significant plans um, where that is concerned and then in terms of the public service arrangement you may very well find that you will deprive people of, 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 of the opportunity to go to Trinidad to take up certain um, kind of position and so the point is no, but I mean if you have your own public service how would that give you the opportunity to go to Trinidad and take up certain opportunities. Oh, those, I can't those see were that. not things. Those were not things that were articulated by the people of Tobago in terms of priority. And so I've indicated to you what you know what are. I agree with you. I agree with you because I've seen with the Joint Select Committee where I think Farley Augustine showed up three times and probably make a small contribution once or so. And I can't remember honestly hearing any of those things. So you are right they were not introduced at the level of the Joint Select Committee, but now there is an opportunity. So what do you believe is going to happen? There is an opportunity until the 15th of July for people to make suggestions and you may well find these on the table. So how do you think that is going to affect what goes to the parliament next? Well, I don't know what will come in the future, but the important thing is that the process is opened in a manner where persons can still uh, submit information. Of course, when we had that last uh, meeting with the Joint Select Committee, it was always indicated that there is an opportunity right up to, I think, either the second or third reading for persons to submit comments, for them to submit recommendations. So it is important because the point should not be said that there was not sufficient room for consultation with the people of Tobago because that was always indicated by the leader. And, and, of, and, of and yet the United National Congress kept saying that. That was their reason more or less for saying they're not supporting this is that there was insufficient consultation. And if the people were asking for two more weeks, why not give it to them? And it has been said, it was said at the level of the Joint Select Committee that there is sufficient time um, to submit those comments right up until the time that the debate has been um, has, has come to, 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 to a close. And so we always knew that there were those um, opportunities as well. 
So these people in Tobago, these six to 10 people who are speaking and including, including people from the PDP, on whose behalf do they speak? If not the people of Tobago, you're suggesting it's not the people of Tobago. But when you speak, you're, you're asking us to accept that it is for the people of Tobago that you speak. So why shouldn't we accept that they too are speaking for the people of Tobago? Well, <laughs> Natalie, I would respond to that by saying that if they have further recommendations, if they have further comments, submit it to the committee, the joint select committee, so that it can be taken into consideration. But at the same time, the point must not be lost that what is in the document now is an agreement by the people of Tobago. These are the fundamental areas that we want to see um, included in the document. Some of them are advancing new areas that have not seen the light of day of the people of Tobago. So Such as making laws where, for themselves. I think that and, is and, so more than that the is money. That is where the critical issue is. Somebody wake up, woke up this morning and decide that we need cessation or we need a federalism kind of arrangement. And so let us add it to the discussion to throw, to throw off where we are at this point. And that is what is happening in, 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 in large part. Tobago wants to be a part of Trinidad and Tobago. Tobago has asked for an increased share of the budgetary allocation. We have asked for the ability to borrow. We have asked to treat with the public service um, arrangement. We have asked for uh, a enhanced um, arrangement in terms of marine um, boundaries. And of course- Yet you haven't got the public share, service arrangement. And those have been taken into consideration. So the Except the public service arrangement. So the comparison is between what is in the Tobago House of Assembly Act now and what is in the Tobago Island Government Bill. And if we are- Well, to well maybe in 2021, that, Tobagonians want more. I don't know though, you know, from where I'm sitting that people have thought of the implications of wanting a quasi-federal system because well, you I, could well get that. But I the thing is, know. I don't know that people have thought it through. Like, like I heard Farley on a program saying, what Tobago needs is a, is a quasi-federal system. And I'm saying, but if you want that, there are so many things that it's almost like you have to throw away this bill, go back to the, to, to the drawing board, go back to the people of Tobago and see what that will look like because a, a quasi-federal system is not what we have in the bill now. It's so much when people are going to, I don't know, it's like people saying, okay, you want secession, but you have not thought about how you're going to organize your judiciary, how you're going to organize the public service, how you're going to organize your budget. It's a whole different system. Independence is a whole different system. We saw it, not, it's not that it can't happen, but these are things you'd have had to thought out and you know, think about before you decide you want to introduce it to the people, but it has been introduced. So I'm asking again, Tracy, if these things, now that we have until the 15th of July, and I hope, you know, that Tobagonians are taking notes that they have until the 15th of July to make their suggestions about what they want to see for Tobago. If these six to 10 people introduce this to the discussion, it might well mean that Tobago might stay where it is right now, or it might mean that it might get the support of the United National Congress, and then Tobago has to be scrambling to try to figure out its story. But well, it's sometimes it's good to scramble and figure out your story, because when well, it's figured out after 10 years, you'll be good. Well, the thing is, the thing is, Natalie, you know, um, the older folk, the senior folk who are wiser than me would always say that development is really a journey. Yeah? It sometimes should not be seen as a destination. Because as you progress along, you would find that, of course, there are changes that would need to be made and that kind of thing. And so I think at this point in time, we have to ask the question, if what is contained in the bill would take us closer to the goal that we want to achieve eventually? And that question is yes. 
because I mean, the journey started well over 25 years, you know, Natalie, and to come to this point now to say that we are not prepared to accept anything um, and to come to this point to indicate that we want to restart the process of consultation, it means that we would not be getting anywhere closer to our goal uh, in, the, in, the, in the shortest possible time frame. And, well, and you don't know that. Yeah. What if the idea of a federal quasi system is introduced into the into the, the the discussion at the joint select level committee and when it goes to parliament the united national congress decides to support it well you we get a, fed, a, a we, we, federal system we don't know that the united national congress will support it because if you paid any attention to what the united national congress um, has, has has debated on they have not even gone into any aspects of any clauses contained in the bill their argument was more along the lines of tobago needs more consultation but the argument was always that the process is open and what is before us now would have come through a very very rigorous process at the end of the day and so i am not even so sure that the unc is even prepared to support anything, whether the process reopens to another five or six or seven or 10 years, there would always still be some kind of excuse uh, to not give Tobago the, the autonomy that Tobago has been clamoring for um, for the longest while now. I mean, I know you're a political leader, maybe you don't want to say, but the United National Congress's you know, um, contribution in the House was just horrible. It was just abysmal. You know, well, as you said, there wasn't any debate on the bill it was just making an argument to that there wasn't any time to the point where the speaker said it got repetitive i think they kind of banned him from saying that because there was nothing else that they contributed and the fact that their strongest uh speakers on their side didn't even contribute to the bill it shows something for those of us who are paying attention that the united national congress did not seem interested in giving tobago the the autonomy at least the autonomy that is presented in the bill, that was presented in the bill. And, and this is the point I'm making. So the, when you listen to the contribution, and of course it is well established here uh, in Tobago that it is clear that they do not want to support the bills and to give the people of Tobago um, the autonomy and the authority um, to lead their own lives and to determine uh, where they would want to go in the future. Because of course, you know, the debate was very poor. They did not even look at any of the clauses in the bill. All of them spoke to the same issue, basically, lack of consultation, lack of consultation. But at the end of the day, they could not even say that even if the process reopens for a further two weeks, whether they would support the bill or not. So it is clear that that is a, is a stalling tactic uh, from the UNC to not give consideration to what is in front of us now. Uh, Mrs. Celestin, let us talk about, we, we, uh, you wouldn't even imagine, but the time has gone considerably. We have about five minutes left. But let's talk about when, when this, this is back at the Joint Select Committee, the parliament will be prorogued in about what, two weeks, three weeks, uh -huh. Uh -huh. the end of July and, and the end of July in about three weeks. Today is the 10th. So uh, uh, about two and a half weeks then. What is going to happen to this bill if it does not get back to the parliament before it is prorogued? Well, well, Natalie, I, I really don't know, but I pray that the bill does not die a sudden death. That is what I pray for, and that there will be the required support from the members of parliament, the House of Representatives, because it is- But an do you think it can get back to the parliament after the two weeks before it, it is closed and debated? There, there might be ways and means of achieving that so that the bill does not die. Because as I said, it would be a very sad day for Tobago if that bill dies and we are not even able to achieve um, the, the important things that are already provisioned uh, in the bill. Um, they take Tobago closer to what we want to achieve. And so I am really praying and hoping that um, some law, some rule or regulation is triggered in a certain manner to preserve the bills as opposed to um, causing them to die a sudden death because right. it means that years of work would have gone down the drain and Tobago would lose out uh, significantly. 
I don't know that it would have gone down the drain. I mean, the work has been done, that's fine. Let's say they introduce new things to the bill and now you really are going to have to need new, going to need additional time to figure out what it will look like if new things are introduced to the bill. And it's, you know, the parliament is prorogued. What happens? I'm trying to figure out two things. If the bill can be debated before parliament is prorogued, if it can be debated again, that's one. And two, if it's not debated before parliament is prorogued, can't, what happens to it in the new parliamentary term September? Well, um, that is what I said. Um, there are rules and regulations that could, one, um, cause the bill, the life of the bill to be extended, or perhaps there might be a situation where the bill um, would eventually die. And if the bill dies, it means that it cannot be brought back to parliament within a period, I, I, I don't know if it's six I months, it's six or months. A year yeah. or, or something to that effect. Um, um, and, and so we're hoping, and if, if, if it's not concluded, that it does not die a sudden death, because it will, of course, be a very sad day for Tobago. The people of Tobago are looking forward to being able to get a greater share of the resources as early as from September, October, when the new budget is read. The people of Tobago are looking forward to the opportunity to make laws. People are- Tracy Davis, Mr. Lesson, have you spoken to your political leader, Dr. Keith Rowley, at that level? about having the bill debated before parliament is prorogued? Well, let me say that Dr. Rowley would do what is it, what, whatever can be done in the best interest of the people um, of Tobago. Of course, um, being a Tobagonian, Dr. Rowley would want to ensure that Tobago receives its fair share um, of, of the, the arrangement between of Trinidad and Tobago. So I'm sure that he would do um, whatever has to be done from his level as a leader um, of the government of, of Trinidad and Tobago. So you so haven't spoken have to that him. assurance and we have um, that commitment at this point. But um, so, you, so you haven't you haven't spoken to him then about having the bill debated before Parliament is proved. Well, I don't think I have to say yeah or nay. All I would say is that um, we have the assurance and the commitment that whatever can be done to ensure that Tobago is well accounted for uh, in the arrangement between Tobago, Trinidad and Tobago, he will, he will do that, do whatever it, what can be done. All right, Mrs. Celestin, it's that time where we have to wrap your final words. We have about 30 seconds. Well, as I said, Natalie, and it has been my um, discussions all throughout um, this arrangement of talking on the Tobago Island government bill, that it is important for us at this time. Um, it can easily be um, a step in the right direction. Uh, the bill as it is now accounts for most of the things that the people of Tobago have, at, have articulated for, um, for the longest while now, financial independence, um, the ability to borrow, treating with um, having lawmaking powers, a greater share of the marine resources. And so all of us have the opinion that what is contained there now takes us closer to the achievement um, of those goals. And of course, again, um, this is my appeal for the members of the House of the Representatives. The PNM have already said that they have 22 votes and we are now seeking the additional support from the UNC in this particular arrangement. I'm going to urge those people from Tobago who have been making quite a lot of noise to lend your voices to the process so that this bill can be passed because of course it will be a sad day for the people of Tobago if it is that this bill falls down in parliament and we have to restart the process that we have been engaged in for the last 25 years or so. Right. All right, Mr. Celestin, thank you so much for speaking with us. But I mean, if you're engaged for 25, probably can go for another 10 if that's what the people want to get to the goal of not just, you know, getting 6.8%, but who knows, getting 50%. We wait to see what suggestions are going to be coming to the Joint Select Committee and if we can have that debate before Parliament is prorogued. If not, we wait another six months. We take a break and we'll be back with you. Thank you.